coach Kim Mulkey stopping by here off the bench, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Welcome back home, coach. Congratulations. You bet you guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, Chloe Jackson last night uh, was named the most outstanding player. Of course, your team f- uh, suffered a ton of adversity, losing your best player, Lauren Cox, in the third quarter, which was an emotional time during the game that you had to really kind of measure through. Um, well, let's start with Jackson and her performance and, and really, Coach, how she ended up in Waco for you and running the point for you last night. Well, you guys know Chloe Jackson was at LSU. She started her career. Um at NC State, transferred to LSU, was an all-SEC performer. And this new transfer business that we're in, now we either have to embrace it or we're going to get left behind because we're going to lose transfers as well. And I did my homework, research, and wanted to make sure that Chloe was not a kid that had gotten in trouble at LSU or off the court. She was not. Her reason for leaving, she said, I just want an opportunity to play for a conference championship and a and a national championship and she has blended in so well with this group of, of players what I didn't know when I got Chloe is that I was going to have to play her at point guard because I dismissed my starting all-american point guard before the season started and I just had to ask her to take on that position and the toughest position is like the quarterback in football guys and she just ran with it and I'm so happy for her I'm happy for Kalani Brown, another Louisiana native from Slidell. I'm happy for Moon Urson, another Louisiana native from Destrehan. Our roots go deep in that great state of Louisiana. And, and Coach Mulkey, I want to ask you about something that Jordy was referencing there. Really, y'all were in control of the game the entire time. Then Lauren Cox goes down, right? And the lead starts to evaporate. Kind of seems like everything's crumbling. Like, take us courtside. What, what are you telling your team at that moment? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you exactly my thought process. We were controlling that game. I can't remember. I think we might have even been up like 17 points at that time. 19. They they just stayed in the zone, and I just was saying, praying, please stay in that zone. Please stay in that zone. (laughs) And that kid crumbled to the floor, and I ran out there, and I knew that she was seriously injured because she gets up. She's one of the toughest kids I've coached. And when she didn't get up and I went out there and the screaming that was coming from her, I've heard it too many times in Mm -hmm. sports. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed with her until they wheeled her off. And I mainly uh, just tried to regroup myself as as a coach because I knew that the impact that would have on the game, it would give Notre Dame an opportunity to just pound it inside against the freshman post that I was going to put in. But I had to make sure that team realized when I got back there, that we're going to be okay. And, you know, you say, go win one for Lauren. That probably was said. But the, the honest truth was we just had to focus on figuring out how to sustain what we had and not lose it. And we did. Uh, we, we just we, – we gutted it out is probably the best way to describe it. Kim Mulkey, Hammond native, former Louisiana Tech standout, now the Baylor Bears head basketball coach, claiming her third national title for the program last night. Kind enough to stop by with a couple of minutes here on Off the Bench. Seemed like a cool moment with your family last night. ESPN cameras picked up the FaceTime between you and Kramer. But, of course, you've got a daughter on the bench. And then the story about the adversity that your family has faced mm. over the last year, Coach. Mm. I had no idea after, after learning last night after, after the win. Well, you know, we have somewhat of privacy in our life. But, really, we don't in athletics. Uh, you know that, T-Bob with yeah. your dad having played football, buddy, and you can't hide things. Somehow, some way, just be real. Let people see you have issues. You hurt like everybody else, and you share it. And we did. We lost uh, Scout Marie last year, and there's nothing – I don't think there's anything worse than holding a child or a mm-hmm. grandchild in your hands and know that you're going to leave a hospital with nothing but a box of paper. Mm-hmm. And then along comes Cannon Reed and – uh, he's just the joy of our life. But, you know, you have to keep faith. And my my daughter, Mackenzie, and her husband, Clay, they helped me through that because they have unbelievable faith. Kramer, the timing of his phone call or his FaceTime, he was on the bus with his team. They just had played in northwest Arkansas and were traveling to Tulsa to play today. And he FaceTimed his brother-in-law, my son-in-law, and I look up, and they're like, here's Kramer. He was going nuts. The guys on the team were going nuts. 
And it's ironic, one of them on his team, his old teammate at LSU, Chris Chenea, that he was letting them use his app and his phone. And, you know, we got to share in that moment even before I went on TV with Holly Rowe. And although he couldn't be there, we felt like he was. And so it was a family deal, and, and it was good to hear his voice. Your third title as a coach, you won one as a player, won a few as a player. Um, you've had so much success in this game. Have you had a chance to, to sit back and, and kind of have, uh, have an opportunity to, 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 to get a taste of the accomplishment? Lord, no, man. You live, you live those moments later when you retire and you're in your rocking chair. What you do today is obligations, head back to Waco. I'm sure there'll be things going on there. Leave Wednesday for New York City in the draft with Kalani Brown. Jeez. Come back. You know, you don't have time to, to just pat yourself on the back. You're happy. You're tired. But it's a, it's a good kind of tired. The Pelicans have a job opening that seems like it's going to happen after the year. I'm pushing for Becky Hammond to get that job. I think she'd be a great outside-the-box hire. You have the personality that seems like you could transcend into the men's game. Have you ever thought about that? Yes, I have thought about it. Um, I, I think there's been a handful of coaches in my lifetime that are females that I think can get it done with the guys. First of all, the guys have to respect your knowledge. Number two, you have to make sure that uh, when you get before those guys, you know what in the hell you're doing. You can. A lot of women have the knowledge, but they don't have the oomph, the it factor to get guys to take you seriously. But I do think there are a handful and I don't say this arrogantly, but guys that grew up in Little League Baseball, I was in that dugout with guys. And so I know, um, you know, I could do it. Um, but I also know that I love my job. Baylor takes good care of me financially. Baylor makes sure that I'm happy. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a, a situation where probably in my lifetime you'll see the first uh, female coach a Power Five Conference Division One men's team, but it's going to take a special school, a special AD to bite the bullet, take the criticism, and do it. A lot of people believe that you need to be that person. We appreciate your time this morning, and I know what is a very busy Monday morning. Congratulations to you, your family, and your program for last night's accomplishment. You bet. T. Bob, tell that cutoff boy that daddy of yours, I still love his accent. I'll be good. Yes, ma'am. We'll All do. Right. Thank See you, coach. coach. There she is, Kim Mulkey, after last night's national championship, stopping by here on the greatest the to ever do it. Absolutely.